Assalamu alaikum. Hello everybody. Today we will talk about how to read an elbow x-ray. As you know, fracture lines can be difficult to visualize after acute elbow injury, particularly in children. We will discuss sequential steps that aid in the radiographic recognition of occult signs of injury. The first step is to check the lateral x-ray is really a lateral view. Looking for the hourglass sign or figure of 8 sign which shows that you are actually looking at a true lateral view. Here is an example of a true lateral. Note the symmetric figure of 8 hourglass sign at the distal humerus. Also notice the posterior fat pad. But in this image, here is an imperfect lateral radiograph accompanied by a normal anterior posterior radiograph. Notice how the figure of 8 hourglass sign is asymmetric. The standard radiologic evaluation of the elbow uses four views. One, the anterior posterior view is used to see the bones of the arm and forearm. Two, the lateral view is important for fat bed visualization. Three and four, the internal oblique view and the external oblique view are useful for the assessing the condyles of the humerus. Step 2. Look for an anterior fat bed. Evaluate the fat beds on the lateral flexed view. It is important that the view is a true lateral. If not, abnormal fat beds can be missed. A small anterior fat bed is normal. It is a small radiolucent shadow adherent to the anterior aspect of the distal humerus. But a large one cell sign suggests intra-articular injury. It is described as a cell sign because it is unusually prominent and both outwards to form a triangular shape. After trauma, blood can accumulate in the intra-articular space and push the fat bed anteriorly. A positive cell sign in the setting of trauma is a reliable indication of an intra-articular fracture even if no fracture line can be identified, an atraumatic cell sign indicates intraarticular fluid of an inflammatory nature. Step 3 is to look for a posterior fat bed. Radiographic visualization of a posterior fat bed is never normal and always signifies fluid in the intra-articular space. Again, in the setting of trauma, this strongly indicates a fracture of an articular surface and indicates a fracture in 75%. Here is a radiograph with both cell sign and posterior fat bed sign. Conclusion the anterior fat bed is located in the coronoid fossa. A narrow anterior fat bed is a normal finding on the lateral view. The anterior fat bed can be displaced up and out by fluid in the elbow joint, creating the cell sign. This is usually indicates a fracture in children in the cases of an injury. The posterior fat bed is located in the olecranon fossa on the lateral view. It shouldn't be visible under normal circumstances. Fluid in the elbow joint can displace the fat bed up and out, making it visible on the lateral view. If the posterior fat bed is visible, it suggests a fracture in the setting of an injury. Step 4. Check the anterior humeral line.
draw a line along the anterior aspect of the distal humerus on the lateral view. This line should intersect the middle of the capitellum. If it intersects the capitellum through the anterior third or if it misses it entirely, it suggests a fracture with posterior angulation of the distal humerus. This radiograph shows a normal anterior humeral line. This radiograph demonstrates abnormal alignment of the anterior humeral line, strongly suspicious for fracture. Also note the posterior fat bed and cell sign. If there is displacement, suggests a probable fracture. If there is no figure of it, then this line isn't accurate. Step 5. Check the radio capitular line. On any view of the elbow, a line drawn through the middle of the radial shaft should pass through the capitellum. If the line misses the capitellum on any of the elbow views, dislocation of the radial head is present. This image shows normal radio capitular lines. And this image shows an abnormal radio capitular line. On both views, the radius fails to bisect the capitellum, indicating an obvious radial head dislocation. Also note the anterior and posterior fat beds, as well as the obvious olecranon deformity. A radial head dislocation with an olecranon fracture is called a montage injury. Step 6. Look at the angle of the radial head. Look for any subtle angulation at the radial head, which can indicate a fracture. Look for subtle disruptions in the cortical contour. On this radiograph, notice how the radius bisects the capitellum on this view. However, there is a subtle cortical disruption. Acute angulation at the superior aspect of the distal radius indicating a fracture. Step 7. Check the cortex lines of the distal humerus. Look for any disruption of the cortex on the anterior or posterior humeral borders. This would usually be accompanied by fat beds or displacement of the anterior humeral line. In this radiograph, the anterior humeral line intersects the anterior third of the capitellum, while the radiocapitellar line is intact. There are prominent cell and posterior fat bed signs, and on careful inspection, you can see the subtle cortical disruption along the posterior aspect of the distal humerus. Step 8. Go through all the ossification centers. Check that the ossification centers are appropriate. Use mnemonic gray toy. C for capitellum at 1 year. R for radial head at 3 years. I for internal epicondyle at 5 years. T for trochlea at 7 years. O for olecranon at 9 years, E for external epicondyle at 11 years. The last step, number 9, olecranon and ulnar examination. Look for obvious fracture lines and subtle disruptions in cortical contour. This is not a good lateral radiograph so interpretation of the anterior humeral line is unreliable. There is no obvious anterior or posterior fat bed, and the radiocapitular line is intact. The radial head and the distal humerus appear fine, while there is an obvious proximal olecranon fracture.
Use this systematic approach to the elbow radiograph to avoid missing occult fractures of the elbow. Thank you and goodbye.